Hello, I'm Kendall House, and welcome to Module 6 of Evolution and Human Behavior. In this module, we're going to tie together inclusive fitness, sexual selection, and parental investment. I hope you enjoy it. This presentation is called How Inclusive Fitness Transforms Social Life. So this week's topics in our class include sexual selection and parental investment and how these are related to one another and they very much are related to one another but we're going to make that connection in part through looking at inclusive fitness. Hamilton's rule as we've discussed is transformative and it changes the outcome of our social interactions. So we've already discussed how relatedness can transform altruistic acts into cooperative acts. And we're going to go back and review that. So presumably this is a model of an altruistic act. This is purple benefiting blue. And as a result of that action, purple is harmed. The reproductive fitness of purple is reduced. So altruism is harming yourself to benefit another. And in evolutionary terms, the harm is to your reproductive fitness and the benefit to the other is to their reproductive fitness. So let's say in this example that the harm to purple is one sun and the benefit to blue is three suns. And that clearly is altruism. And we can see that as a result of undertaking this action, purple's direct fitness declines. But the question that we've pursued here is what about purple's inclusive fitness? And in order for there to be inclusive fitness, purple and blue have to be relatives. So we're going to keep the same example we've been using. We're going to say that they're siblings. And because they're full siblings, the coefficient of relatedness between purple and blue is 0.5. That means there's a 50% probability of them sharing a gene that's identical by descent because they share the same parents. Now our question is, uh, does relatedness change anything about the character of that interaction? And as we pointed out, the answer to that is yes, it very much does. So when we're talking about inclusive fitness, we're adding together direct fitness and indirect fitness. So our first step in looking at this action is to tally up the direct fitness cost and benefits. So the cost of purple in direct fitness was one sun, and the benefit to blue in direct fitness was three suns. Our second step is to tally up the indirect fitness cost and benefits. The benefit to purple in indirect fitness is three nephews. The cost to blue in indirect fitness is one nephew. Our third step then is that we have to add direct fitness to indirect fitness and see what happens in terms of the inclusive fitness of purple and blue. So we find that purple's direct reproductive success has declined. That's a loss of the sun. But overall, purple's inclusive fitness has increased due to the three nephews. And because of this, what looked like altruism turns out to be an act of cooperation. So let's look at this first from Purple's perspective. Purple gained three nephews so that the fitness benefit is 0.75. The cost in direct fitness to Purple was 0.5. That's the chance of that son sharing a gene that's identical by descent with Purple. So when we look at those, clearly the nephews, that's a bigger rectangle. So that's a geometric interpretation of this fitness. 
And that means that purple has come out ahead and actually gained uh, from the sacrifice. Well, what about blue? Well, because of purple's action, blue gained three suns. And the fitness gain there, we're going to say, is 1.5. So that's three uh, times the 50% chance of each of those suns sharing a gene that's identical by descent with blue. And the cost of blue was the one nephew. Now, if we look on here, the three nephews that purple gained are the three sons that blue gained. The one nephew that blue lost, it's the same individual as the one son that purple lost. And again, uh, the rectangle shown by the three sons is much bigger uh, than the one nephew. And we also see then that blue uh, gained. So this, it isn't just that Hamilton explained how altruism could be possible, but he presented a model that explained how altruism could turn into cooperation when there's close genetic relatedness. So Hamilton's rule is transformative. If we apply this rule to individuals who are genetically related, the meaning of Hamilton's neighborhood changes. We haven't looked at this yet, but relatedness can also transform selfish acts into spiteful acts. And remember that spite is something that's mutually destructive and should be strongly selected against. And this means that this should put a limit on selfishness among relatives. So let's do this example again, uh, but this time rather than an altruistic act, we're going to focus on a selfish act. So we have purple harming blue, and as a result, purple benefits. So this time purple has benefited and gained one son, and blue has been harmed and lost three sons as a result of purple's actions. So we know now that purple's direct fitness has increased, but the question is, what about purple's inclusive fitness? What's happened to it? And I bet you can guess. So we're going to say again that the coefficient of relatedness between them is 0.5 because they're full siblings. Does this relatedness change anything in terms of the outcome of that act? Does it remain a selfish act? And the answer is relatedness does change things, and that selfish act is transformed into spite. So to see how this happens, again, let's go through and add direct fitness to indirect fitness and calculate inclusive fitness. And we do this because these two individuals are relatives. So first we tally up the direct fitness cost and benefits. The benefit to purple in direct fitness was one sun. The cost to blue in direct fitness was three suns. That certainly looks like selfishness on the part of purple. But now let's look at the indirect cost and benefits. The cost to purple in indirect fitness was three nephews. The benefit to blue in indirect fitness was one nephew. So again, those three nephews of purple are the three sons of blue. And the one nephew of blue is the son of purple. So our third thing here is to add it all up and calculate inclusive fitness. And when we do that, we find that indeed purple's direct reproductive success has increased. However, purple's inclusive fitness has declined. And why is that? Well, let's just look at how it adds together. So. Purple gained one son, so 0.5 in fitness, but purple lost three nephews, that's 0.75 units of fitness. So purple lost more than purple gained in terms of that action. So what looked like purple benefiting by being selfish turns out to be purple being harmed by being selfish. And what about blue? Well, this is pretty straightforward. Uh, Blue lost three sons, 1.5 units of fitness. 
And Blue Green, in return, just one nephew, 0.25 units of fitness. So Blue has also lost. And what looked like selfishness, where one actor was gaining at the expense of the other, because they're relatives, that same action turned out to be an act of spite, and both of them were harmed by it. So Mr. Hamilton's Neighborhood, this is probably a better way to refer to this maybe than Hamilton's Universe. In Mr. Hamilton's Neighborhood, there's four kinds of social actions that can happen. So the fitness of individuals is modulated by their neighbors, by social interactions with the individuals around them. And one of these outcomes is selfish interactions. Another is spite, the third is cooperation, and the fourth is altruism. And what we've been showing is that when you introduce relatedness between these same individuals, the, those acts are transformed. An altruistic act between relatives can turn out to actually be cooperation, and a selfish act among relatives can turn out to be spite. So inclusive fitness is transformative. It changes the nature of social outcomes. And this means that a neighborhood of close genetic kin differs from a neighborhood of non-kin. If they're engaging in the same kind of actions, the outcomes will in fact be different. So there's two take-home messages from all of this. The first is that you're probably tired of smiley faces. <laughs> but if that's the case, then number two would be inclusive fitness is not just about altruism. This is a mistake that even some biologists still make. Hamilton did more than explain altruism. He set up a social universe and explained how genetic relatedness transforms the character of social life in that universe. The second take-home message, then, is that relatedness enables cooperation and puts a break on selfishness. And if this is true, then generally life should be easier among close genetic kin than among non-kin, because selfishness is going to be transformed into spite at a certain point, and that will be strongly selected against whereas altruism is going to turn out to be a win-win cooperation, and that should be strongly selected for. So one expectation that some thinkers drew from Hamilton's work was that kinship equals amity. That means peacefulness and everybody cooperating and getting along. And some of you may think, yeah, that's what family life is like, but probably you don't have a big family. So many Americans today are single children, and you can imagine what a big family might be like. Um, anyone who's grown up in a big family knows that everything isn't uh, cooperation. And that's what we're going to look at in the next presentation. Thanks for listening.